Uh, we start with uh, the Braidas. He got his uh, PhD in 2020 from RKM uh, Educational and Research Institute in India under the uh, advisor of Shamik Gupta. And he did uh, a first postdoc at University of Bristol with, uh, under the supervision of Luca Giugioli. Now he's uh, a postdoc at ICTP under the advisor of Edgar Roll. Roldan, and he will talk us uh, on uh, quantum unitary evolution interspersed with repeated non-unitary interaction at random times. So please, the floor is yours, the breath. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, let me share my screen. Okay, we see your screen, yes. Yeah, okay. So first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Federico and the other organizers for inviting and for giving me this opportunity to present my work. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the, qu the quantum unitary evolution interspersed with repeated non-unitary interactions at random time. So this work was mainly done with my uh, collaborators, Shamik Gupta and Shushanta Dattagupta, both of whom are uh, from India, and uh, these are the references. Okay, uh, so so outline. So today I'm just uh, I will start with a little bit of introduction of what we want to ex exactly do here, and then I will uh, talk about our exact uh, evolution scheme for the quantum system, and. Uh, then I will, I will talk about a formalism that we, uh, we find that it is very useful. And then we will apply this formalism to a, a model of quantum system is a tight binding model. And then we will see and we will choose different, uh, the, as you see in the title of my talk, so there is uh, non-unitary interactions. So we will we will see that we will take two representative uh, classes of non-unitary interactions and we will see okay how they and where and how they lead to and then i will conclude my uh, presentation so let's start okay so first of all let's say if we have an uh, isolated quantum system that it, it evolves unitarily and we know then there will be this coherent evolution which is essential for uh, preserving some information. But uh, in real world, so perfect isolation is uh, never possible. So we can think of uh, an, a system isolated for a finite time interval until there are um, external effects that uh, kick in. Now here for a quantum system, so what the, the, by external effects, so I mean, uh, so it's like an uh, effect from external in environment or some measuring apparatus. And this interaction would uh, induce non-unitary evolution and it would lead to decoherence for the quantum system. So in this cartoon, so I just uh, show, okay, so you, you may, let's say you prepare a system and then it is evolving uh, unitarily and then at, at random times, you have some interactions which kicks in at random times so this is like an uh, non-unitary evolution. And after some point, after some time, you detect the system. So we will talk about this part of the thing, the non-unitary interactions and what we will see for a given uh, quantum system here. So typically these uh, interactions, they kick in at random times and we will see that this unitary evolution interspersed with this non-unitary interactions at random times. Now see, this, this randomness that is, uh, we will deal with this randomness, this is like a classical randomness. This is on top of the quantum randomness that is inherent uh, to any quantum system. And what we uh, want to uh, see is that the main question, so this uh, decoherence induced by these non unitary interactions, how this coherence to decoherence crossover and how it, it appears from the interplay between this classical and quantum randomness. Okay, so let's uh, start. 
So this is our uh, quantum evolution scheme. Let's say we have a generic uh, uh, quantum system with a time dependent Hamiltonian H and it evolves unitarily. And we, we study this evolution in terms of the density operator and see this is in, in, a, so in a typical realization of uh, non-unitary interaction. So by this figure, I show this thing. Suppose we are here at time equals to t equals to zero. We start with an initial density operator. Then there is an evolution, an unitary evolution for time tau one. Then there is an interaction. Then again, there is an uh, unitary, there is a unitary evolution for time tau two. And then again, there is an, uh, there is a non-unitary non -unitary interaction. So this way, in a typical realization, when I ask, okay, so what is the state of the system at time t, there could be, let's say a possible number of uh, non-unitary interactions and all of them can be at random times. So in a, in a different realization, so we will see that, okay, again, if I want to uh, ask, okay, what is the state of the system at time t, we may have encountered a, a different number of interactions and at different and different time intervals. So typically, okay, so since we are a statistical phases, so we normally choose this, let's say these time gaps, we take these time gaps, uh, sampled independently, sampled from a common distribution, P tau, and this T is the time instant of our observation when we uh, ob observe the system. Yes, so is there any, any question? There is some noise, but uh, okay, okay. Like the noise uh, went down. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So let let let, let me proceed. Uh, okay. So now let us let us focus on a a particular realization. We start here. So we start with uh, the initial density operator rho zero. Then there is a unitary evolution for tau one which is given by this uh, Liouvillean operator here. And then you have a uh, non-unitary interaction. And we, uh, so whenever we talk about this non-unitary interaction, we, we, uh, we, we see this effect in terms of an operator T. In fact, this is not an operator in usual sense. This is like a, a super operator which acts on an operator. We will see about the super operators a bit later. Okay, so here is the first interaction. We have T here. Then again, we have a, uni we have a unitary evolution for time tau two, which is from T one to T two, which is given by again this Liouvillean operator and so on. So in a, in a, so in a typical realization for, for the last, so if you see this, this uh, schematic diagram, so we have P number of, Non interactions here. So that's why we have P number of so the number of occurrence of this super operator T. This is the we have P number of T's in this thing. And uh, in the last evolution, so this is purely unitary when we had the last interaction at time TP and from time TP to uh, time T, there is a unitary evolution. So this is a scenario in a typical realization where L is L dictates the unitary evolution of the density operator and it is uh, given by this in terms of the Hamiltonian of your system. Now, since this is a typical realization, now we, we want to know, okay, so on the average, if I take an average over different realizations, what would happen uh, to the density matrix? Okay. So now we need to, uh, so we take the thing, okay, we take the uh, density operator list for a typical realization and we need to take the average. So here, this, since we are sampling this uh, time intervals from the distribution P tau, so we have this uh, P functions here, and then we need to integrate over all these P's and, and here, this, this function f, it, it, it tells you, okay, so 
from TP to T, there were, I mean, no uh, interaction. So it was fully unitary. Now we need to integrate over all possible T1, T, T's, let's say T. So we integrate over all possibilities here. And remember that in, in every realization, the number of interactions were different. So we also need to uh, sum over the number of realizations here. So we do this sum over here. So this is the full expression for the average density operator where we have these interactions at random times. Okay. So see, in the expression of the average uh, density operator, we, we rewrite the whole thing apart from this rho zero in terms of an operator ut. So we start with the uh, initial density operator rho zero, and this is our average density operator. And there's this super operator ut, which is the whole of this, this function. Okay, now let's go to the next slide. Now, if you see the, uh, the expression for the average density operator, it might be, uh, it might seem a bit complicated, but if we uh, see it clearly, then we will see that there is a nice way of uh, structure here. So we can see the, the, the structure of convolution. For example, let's say, so we see, okay, for the first part, this is a function of T1, and then we see that there is a function of T, the difference from T1 to T2, and we are integrating over uh, T1 up to T2. So we can see that there is this convolution for all, and this convolution is present for all these uh, time intervals, T1, T2, T3, Tp, up to Tp. So uh, we know, okay, so we, we have a tool whenever we see a convolution and we know we can use uh, the Laplace transform so Laplace transform of two convolutions. So in terms of in, in Laplace space, they are given by the, so when, if there is a convolution in Laplace space, so we know the Laplace transform of the convolution is just the uh, the product of the Laplace transformation of individual terms. So we can use this fact here and we can uh, rewrite the, the whole, this uh, complicated stuff. Uh, very uh, in a very elegant manner and in Laplace space. So if I write our average density operator in this way, so this u tilde s, which is the uh, evolution operator in this case, in Laplace space, this is uh, given by this function, this simple form. Okay, so let us focus on this form. So if you see this, this uh, evolution operator in Laplace space, so there are three things. So first of all, okay, so we have this uh, unitary quantum evol evolution and this is given by the Hamiltonian of the system and which is uh, given by the Liouvillean operator L. And then you have uh, the interaction operators T because you need to specify what kind of interactions uh, we are talking about. And then we have these time intervals uh, between interactions. And this is uh, given by the, the distribution of time intervals between two consecutive interactions. Now let us uh, tackle these three things one by one. Let us start with uh, the distributions. Let us, so to, to find an, uh, for a given quantum system, to find this average density operator, we need to specify this pt and the form of the interaction. So let us let us choose uh, a, a pt and then see what how it goes. Okay, so we uh, we choose an, an exponential distribution for the time intervals. So here that means that the the intervals tau one, tau two, tau three, they are sampled from an exponential distribution with a constant rate. Uh, lambda. For this case, one can uh, compute this ft function, which is again exponential minus lambda t. And if we uh, 
use this expression inside our uh, uh, this uh, evol time evolution operator then we will see we can uh, rewrite this time evolution operator in terms of a series and the the physical interpretation of uh, the each of these terms of this series is like okay so when you have an u0 it is it is like there is no interaction term so this is the the bare evolution if you have only this thing that means you have only unitary evolution then you uh, you have an one interaction term then you have a two interaction term and this and it it goes okay and so now let us uh, spin uh, some time on t so as as you, as i mentioned earlier this t and this evolution operator u they are all uh, super operators so let us uh, just uh, Uh, let me just tell you a few uh, words of the super operators so super operators are like uh, they they act on normal operators and they they yield again an operator for example let's say if b is a, a is an uh, ordinary operator and the super operator act on acts on this a and gives an uh, another ordinary operator b in this case if uh, let's say a and b are defined in hilbert space h with uh, complete basis state as um, given by specified by ket n the super operator lives in the product hilbert space uh, given by the dirac product space which uh, set, sorry which uh, satisfies this completeness relation and the for the we can uh, find the matrix element for the super operator t and it it follows uh, this this relation from this relation you can find so for the matrix elements of the super operator t we will have four indices if we have let's say two indices for the ordinary operators a and b so here we have two indices m and n for the super operator t we have four indices okay so let me just uh, so go back here so we so as we remember we have this uh, time interval uh, the distribution for the time interval speed tau we have chosen an exponential distribution so far we haven't chosen the hamiltonian and we haven't chosen the interaction uh, of super operator t so now what we are going to do is that so now given this uh, formalism now we are going to apply this formalism to some specific uh, quantum uh, models so we we take this uh, tight binding model here so let me uh, spend a few words on the tight binding model so now so we so this is an like an uh, textbook example where a quantum particle a single particle uh, a single quantum particle system which resides on an one d lattice we we take and due to quantum fluctuations it it goes uh, from near it it shows nearest neighbor hopping and does this quantum tunneling the hamiltonian of the system is given by this so now we are fixing the hamiltonian so now for this model we are choosing this hamiltonian which is for this model and given this uh, this hamiltonian uh, and we we can uh, this uh, tbm uh, tight binding model it can be solved exactly and one may ask okay so if i if the particle start uh, at some site m0 at uh, time t0 what is the probability to find the particle on a difference on a site m at a later time so this can be solved exactly and if we solve this problem we will see that uh, this the answer it is given by the square of the bessel function this way for example i, I here on this uh, plot i show the the pro, this probability pmt as a function of time here we start from site n0 and as time goes on we see that the the particles in it, it because it gets to uh, visit more and uh, to scan more and more space so it it with time the particles spreads out over the space now this is like a delocalization we we start from somewhere and as time goes on the the probability distribution it spreads 
so we can compute okay so what is the average displacement in this case and we will see that this is zero and if we can uh, if we can also compute the mean square displacement and which in this case is given by uh, delta square t square so it's like a, a ballistic motion we, we see here so this is the recapitulation of uh, the tight binding model now we uh, move ahead so before we move ahead so i i want to make uh, i want to comment that okay so we have fixed the distribution between time intervals of non-unitary interactions and we have also chosen and uh, quantum system and we have chosen the hamiltonian so the the only thing that is left is to choose the the form of the interaction so here we take we choose two representative form of the interactions so we will uh, consider the projective measurements and the stochastic resets. Okay, so so far so good. If 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 you have any question, so just uh, stop me and ask. So is there any question so far? I don't think so. So you you have a five minutes from now, right? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let me let me uh, tell about the the results. So. We, we, with what is the projective measurement? So here we, we start with, uh, with, let's say we start at site zero and the system starts to evolve. And then we do a measurement at a random time. And so we, we project here. So the, in this cartoon, you see the, the particle spreads over the sites. And at this moment, we do a projective measurement. So we have left with the projected part and the subsequent evolution starts from this part and again, at a random time, we again project. So we are left with the projected, projected spark. So if you do this, uh, the dynamics, and uh, then, so the, we will see, okay, so we start, let's say, with the exponential distribution. Since we have chosen the exponential distribution, and if we apply our formalism to this problem, then we will see that, okay, so in the limit of when the measurements are very frequent, we will see something similar like the Zeno effect. So in, in quantum Zeno effect, when you do a projective measurement at random, at, uh, I mean, equal intervals and uh, very frequent measurements, then you see that the, that the probability that the particle is still on the initial state is close to one. So in this case, with our setting, we also see a similar suppression and, uh, but, uh, what is uh, important is that since we are not uh, fixed, so we are not constrained to make the repeated measurement exactly at uh, equal intervals. So this is uh, experimentally more feasible than, uh, than measuring things at regular intervals. Okay, so here I will just, uh, there are these analysis. So this is the form of the, T of super operator, which you have to choose for the projective measurement. So this is a very simple thing. Okay, I'm not uh, going to get into this, so I'm skipping this part. So let me uh, go to the reset part. So, okay, so now let's talk about a stochastic reset. So here again, the stochastic reset. So this is uh, like we are starting from a site uh, zero, then the system starts to evolve. And then we do a, at random time, we do a reset. So we again, so it's like we start our experiment afresh. So again, so if you do like this way, then we see that there is a, a time independent uh, probability distribution uh, in there is a steady state. And you will, you will see that in the steady state, we get a time independent probability distribution. So remember that uh, for the no, normal uh, the tight binding model without any interaction. So we had this mean square displacement, which was uh, like uh, growing with T square. But here we see that there is the, it is the particle gets to this uh, time independent probability distribution. So it's like the particle is now localized to your system. So again, okay, I am uh, skipping this analysis part. 
So this is the form of the sub T super operator that you need to choose for this uh, stochastic resetting thing. And if you solve the problem, so you will uh, get that the average uh, probability uh, at on a site or to be at site M, it is given by this. So this is uh, like a renewal form where this J square M in zero, this is the, the propagator for the uh, tight binding model without any reset. So this term, so it's like whenever you reset your uh, system, so the, the, the thing that would matter is only the, the last time when you reset this thing. So this is uh, depicted by this, this schematic diagram. So you start from N0. So in one case, maybe the, the last reset was at uh, time t prime here and the, in the other case maybe the last reset was here but so if you uh, follow this this thing and you can uh, see okay so this is uh, given by this renewal form okay so just to conclude so since the the two models uh, so we we have also uh, used our formalism with the with the TBM with a uh, time dependent Hamiltonian where there is a periodic forcing. And again, in this case also, we see that uh, there is a, so this is again the mean square displacement. Then you will see that this black curve, it is again growing with time. And if you have stochastic reset, so this uh, mean square displacement, it, it goes to a constant value with time. So we see the localization here. And for, the, for this model particularly, so there is something called dynamic localization for, for particular values of F0 and omega, you see a localization without any interaction. So this is given on the uh, showing, this is shown on this plot. So this is by this uh, black dotted curve. And again, for the, with stochastic reset, we have this uh, localization here. So to conclude, so what we uh, say is that, okay, so here the localization is induced by stochastic reset in, in TBM if there is no periodic field uh, when otherwise the mean square displacement is unbounded. And even if there is a periodic field when otherwise bounded MSD requires a very particular value of F0 and omega, but still we see localization if there is reset. So this is the, the crossover between coherence to decoherence. So we see delocalization or dynamic localization in the Bayer TBM model to localization in the presence of stochastic reset. So we hope to apply this formalism because it is uh, quite general. We need to specify only three things, the system, the type of interaction and the random intervals, the distribution of the random intervals, we hope to apply this formalism in, in, in many body quantum systems. Okay, so uh, I think I am, uh, I have, uh, so this is uh, what I would like to uh, tell. So thank if you. there is any, thank you very much for your attention. If, if there thank, are you questions, so, thank you very much, uh, Debra. Yeah, so is if there, there are questions, so I am happy to. Any question or comment from the audience? I don't see any questions. So I have one question. Just uh, so your uh, non-unitary uh, operator is uh, is uh, of a specific type. It's just T, right? And it is uh, defined. Uh, for the entire time evolution. But in principle, you could have uh, even more than just one non-unitary operator. Is that correct? So here, okay, so for all the interactions at, at random time, so this operator is the same operator. Yeah. So, and we choose two representative class. So yes, in general, so if we think of other, uh, let's say if you can say uh, other non-unitary interactions, so we just need to find Okay, so what is the form of this T in terms of its matrix element? So if we know the matrix element, if we can write it down, then we can again use the formalism here. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine something uh, of the type of uh, an inverse non-unitary operator, something that goes back or? An, an inverse. 
So, so sorry, you, you are saying an inverse non-unitary operator. Yeah, right? something that uh, has an action which is reversing the action of the non-unitary operator. Oh. Uh, hmm. I, I don't know, maybe I, I need to think uh, it a bit. Uh, certainly, you'll see if, if there are uh, uh, the decay in the probability, then I don't know how do you increase the, for example, let's say if we take the example of, no, mm -hmm. this is, if I was thinking about the projective measurement, but this is a, for a given uh, interaction form. I think I, I need to think it about. Mm. I don't have any answer now, but uh, I need I, I, I need to think about it. Okay. So, Thank you. Uh, is there any other question or comment? So if not, thank you very much again for your seminar.